Taylor here with AgriSpray Drones. Let's take a look at the spray systems on the DJI Agris T50, the XAG P100 Pro, and the newcomer to the US market, the EA Vision J100. Now, obviously the spray system is a really critical part for any spray drone. What does that encompass? That's tank, that's flow meter, pumps, how the pumps actually, the hose works going from the tank and from the pumps to the nozzle, what kind of nozzle, how that nozzle works and how that nozzle attaches and operates on the drone. So it sounds simple, but there's a lot of moving parts in the spray system and with the spray drone, obviously this is a really critical component here and something to get right. Okay, now just to state the obvious here, all three of these drones have a very similar method of atomization that is called rotary or centrifugal atomization, meaning there's a disc that spins at high RPM and that chops up your droplets instead of a pressurized system like what T-Jet might use or like what your ground rig might use where it pressurizes through a small orifice. These use rotary atomization. So all very similar in that regard. But there are very key differences between these three drones. So we're gonna start at the top and look at the tanks on all three. All right, so on the Agris T50, we have a 40 liter tank. EA Vision has a 45 liter tank, expandable up to 60 liters because our motors are capable of producing a lot more thrust uh, than just a 45 liter tank. So 45 liters up to 50, or excuse me, 60 on the J100. And on the XAG P100 Pro, we have a 50 liter tank. All right, so notice some similarities on these two as far as tank placement. Both EA Vision and DJI have a center mounted tank that goes through the frame. It goes through the frame and it sits on scales uh, where the pumps and the flow meter are attached to the pump itself. Very similar design uh, on the XAG, uh, or sorry, DJI and EA Vision versus the XAG has an under mounted tank. So the tank is actually under slung under the frame and the top frame of the drone actually clips on to the bottom frame, which is what the tank is attached to. Which brings us to the next point is how do these drones attach to this tank or has the tank attached to the drone and how do you remove that tank? Because these are not just spray drones. These are all three spreader drones as well. The XAG, Unclip there, unclip there, and unplug your two hoses in the back along with your cable and the entire frame of the drone, everything besides the landing gear in the tank lifts off. You lift the entire frame of the drone off of these handles and you put it on the landing gear of the spreader system, which is mounted the same way. Both X or DJI and EA Vision, very, very similar in this regard where you have two hoses, one on this side, one on the opposite side, you have a wing nut here, you undo that wing nut, you pull this hose apart, and then on the bottom side, you have one wire right there, unplug that wire, and then the tank actually pulls out. This is exactly the same on the DJI system. With one key difference, if you use the quad nozzles on the DJI, you actually have to unplug four sets of, of hoses to do that. All right. Now the other difference as far as EA Vision and DJI on the tank mount um, scenario is how the drone fits onto our scales. So you see we have four way bars here, two on this side, two on that side, four independent scales. On DJI, we have three scales. We have one on the front and one on each rear corner. You can see we've got a lot of play on this T50. This tank is not actually uh, inserted over or on um, a particular you know, piece of hardware to keep it in one spot. It's just resting on top of those scales right there. So it can slide to the left, slide to the right. This may not seem like that big of a deal, but this is a big tank. And if you fill it all the way up, that's 40 liters or 40 kilograms. 88 pounds. And if you have this shift over to the side here or the side there, that can offset your center of gravity just a little bit, which would cause possibly some big problems. On the J100, 
the tank itself has um, little uh, grommets right there that fit over our scale bars. And so it actually rests and buckles up into the tank and you can't move it side to side. So the tank stays exactly where you want it to stay while keeping the simplicity of the DJI system. This is a very good design and something, again, very, very simple, and yet it makes all the difference in the world. All right, next we'll look at pumps. I'll be turning some drones around here. So you see the pumps are right on the front of our J100. On our T50, they're on the back, but also mounted to the tank. And on the XAG, they're also on the back. <laughs> mounted to the tank. All right, we're gonna start over here because the XAG has a bit more of a complex thing going on. These are peristaltic pumps. That's a squeeze pump, basically. So it's squeezing a hose and it's pushing fluid through that hose inside this housing right here. So you see these hoses right here come from the bottom of your tank. They are pulling liquid in, squeezing through um, a a peristaltic pump on, there's two of them actually, one here, one there on the top and bottom, going out here and then through our flow meter into our arms and out our, our, uh, our rotary atomizer. These pumps here, very difficult to service in the field. You have to have a lot of hardware to get this apart. And once you have it apart, you've got roller bearings, uh, you've got grease because you have to grease the inside of those peristaltic pumps because you're squeezing that hose. Otherwise, your hose will burst. So maintenance on the XAG pump, essentially once, I mean, it depends how often you're spraying, but at least once a week, you need to be uh, reapplying grease inside of this pump housing. Otherwise, you may have a bursted hose. It's a big problem uh, with the XAG pumps. All right, and while we're here, we're gonna go ahead and follow on down the arm and look at our atomizer. So the atomizer on the XAG tucks up like this for storage. You undo this thumb nut, unhook it right there. It folds down. You can actually pick a different spot. So you can have it out here, you can have it out there, you can have it straight down, uh, but you don't have one set position where it always goes to. Right there, there's two different positions where it can go to. In my opinion, this is a problem. Why is this a problem? Well, with spray drones, you want accuracy, precision. Most importantly, you want repeatability. They're repeatable on the same line with GPS accurate control or RTK if you choose that. The spray system should be accurate and repeatable as well. And if you have two different or three different or four different places where you can actually lock this thing in, and if it flops whenever it's there, just like this does, check that out, that's, that's pretty floppy. What's that gonna do to your pattern? If that nozzle is moving around or in a different position, that's a big problem when it comes to repeatability. Going down the line here, here we see our rotary atomizer. This one's broken. <laughs> Why is it broken? because the atomizer on the XAG is a very thin disc. Now it's very thin because thin means lightweight. Uh, it means you need a smaller motor, like this has a very small motor to spin at high, high RPMs, but it also means you've got an atomizer disc that can easily break. This just happened while we were taking it uh, out of the back of the truck. It popped on the tailgate and it busted off right there. Um, you have to have a three millimeter wrench uh, to replace that in the field. Another problem with the XAG system. All right, now enough on that. Let's look over at the DJI system and the EA Vision J100. So the DJI system here, we've got impeller style pumps. Now, I'll see if I can take one off here. Normally there's a rubber band that goes over uh, this part of the pump right there to make sure that it doesn't come off, right? Doesn't untwist and come out. Uh, we've taken those off because they are a pain in the butt to actually put back on. And so we just keep them off, twist it to the left. Got some spray dye left in this one. And there we go, it's out. 
And here we have a magnetically coupled, get out of the way so you can see it, magnetically coupled impeller. There it goes. There's our impeller. It magnetically couples onto the motor. This does make maintenance really easy. So impeller style pumps mean that your maintenance is incredibly easy because A, you don't have peristaltic squeeze hoses. You have no grease to put in there. Um, and if you have a clog, you just saw me take it apart. You can do that in the field, run some water through that and take it apart. Now, it's really important to understand how these actually work. So on the DJI system, where does the water come from? Well, it comes from right here. So it comes from through this housing here out to our impeller here. And you can see it's going to pull water from the interior of this ring right there. And it's going to spit it out the exterior and it's going to throw it up through this hose here. This is a low pressure system, not designed obviously to go through a T-jet nozzle, but through atomizers. And that's why we can use these small impeller styles on the DJI system. Now getting it back on there, however, different story with the DJI system. There we go. Now it's back on there. All right. Now it runs up through our flow meter, dual channel flow meter, through our hoses, through our arms, through the center of our motor. Because again, we have a motor on the bottom, so it has to go through the center of the motor and out through the atomizer. Now, again, with the XAG or the DJI system, just like the XAG, we've got a not a very solid atomizer here. We've actually seen out of this rubber boot, you can kind of see some separation happening there. If you get if you operate these long enough, you get a lot of separation between this rubber boot uh, and this lower housing a very cheap, thin plastic. Not only that, but this nut actually attaches to the motor shaft itself. And so that, if that wears out, you're replacing your motor, um, not just uh, your rotary atomizer. And again, here we do have one single disc, uh, a bit more robust than the XAG, but a very lightweight single disc down here. Okay. Looking at the J100. So here we've got our pumps mounted on the front instead of the back. Now I like this for one particular reason, which may not really amount to that much, but we have noticed on the DJI system, those motors spin really fast because they are impeller style pumps. So an impeller pump motor spinning very fast means it's gonna build up heat in the ESC. Our motor's mounted on the front of the drone. This drone's flying forward meaning that we're going to get air movement over the motor and over the ESC controlling the motor, meaning that we should not have the heat problems uh, and the ESC problems on the EA Vision compared to the DJI system, yet we have very similar motors. So I'm gonna see if I can spin this around and show you guys how these come apart. So just like the DJI system, these come apart very simply, but they have a cotter pin here which makes way more sense. You know, if you're a farmer, you're very used to cotter pins holding things together. It's a very foolproof way to keep things from coming apart instead of rubber bands like that one has. Take the cotter pin off, rotate it, and it pulls off. And right there is our impeller. Now, you'll notice this is a quite a bit smaller than the DJI's. Uh, that is because we have very large veins on the inside, not the outside, but the inside. So right here is where we are sucking water from the tank. Because the suction veins are bigger, this actually means that our pressure um, is higher through the J100 uh, pump system, even though it's still an impeller style pump. Larger suction veins, and then it's gonna throw it out through the outside there. And again, just like on the DJI system, it's gonna throw it through your hose right there. And also just like the DJI system, it is a suction or sorry, a magnetically coupled uh, impeller style. But we have something interesting here, something I really like a lot, is a, a dual, um, what I'm calling a dual barrier. So we have, this is our first barrier uh, from water, separating water from our impeller and our motor, is this plate right there. And our second barrier is just the housing right there itself. So two barriers mean that 
the chances of getting water or anything chemical inside of your motor are reduced in half and way easier to get back on just like that. Incredibly simple. I'll throw this guy back in there real quick. All right. So also just like DJI, we've got from our pump up through our flow meter, from our flow meter through our hose, from our hose out to our atomizer. Now, this, this sets the J100 apart big time. Now you saw how flimsy the XAG was. You saw how flimsy the DJI is. Look at this. I'm moving the entire drone with my hand only on the atomizer. This is on there solid. It attaches with stainless steel clips. So right there and right there, two stainless steel clips attaching to stainless steel on the bottom. We've got, this attaches to aluminum housing. Right there, that, that uh, nut attaches to aluminum over there. That attaches to plastic. This attaches to stainless steel with two big clips. And it does so incredibly easily. Just like that. You wanna get this one off, you're turning right there a lot. And well, that's about all you got. You can't even do anything with that. You wanna get this off, your two clips, and there you've got your wires and your hose all right there. The other thing this has is a giant motor. Look at this motor from here to here. That is one motor and then a gearing system down here. Why does it have a gearing system? Because these are counter rotating. These are massive atomization discs. It doesn't just have one, it has two. DJI talks about double atomization. This is their double atomization. It's one disc that has a cover. This is true double atomization. The outer disc rotates one way, the inner disc rotates the other way, counter rotating. Your liquid comes through here, out through the center, through a channel all the way around the inside of this inner disc, and it shoots through these pins. No other drone has this. Not only that, but we have counter rotating. I mean, this is just a marvel of engineering in my opinion. And right there, <laughs> alone, this makes up for what these lack. I get so tired replacing those things. Okay, that is a spray system on all three of these drones, the DJI T50, the XAG P100 Pro, and the newcomer, the EA Vision J100. In my opinion, it's extremely clear which drone has the most robust um, and most precise spray system, repeatable, not going to dangle off in a different direction. Not only that, but the EA Vision is capable of producing microns down to 10, 10 microns. We've got 50 here, we've got I think 50 or 60 here, 10 microns, meaning that if you want really, really small, I'm talking microscopic microns for blasting through the canopy of orchards or vineyards, insecticide application, mosquito abatement, the J100 does something that these drones couldn't even get close to. 10 micron sizes that is repeatable and that has a very narrow spectrum on your micron scale. Okay, I think we've covered everything we could cover on the spray system between these drones. If you guys wanna see more of the J100, if you guys wanna see this drone flying in action for yourself, give us a call, let us know. Thanks.